welcome to online media course piano well uh, today in this etude I'm gonna show you how I uh, overcome some super difficult fragments in this etude using uh, music and enough expression from my system and um, today I'm gonna focus and I'm gonna talk about articulations dynamics and voicing uh, musical speech phrasing and movements of wrist and elbow. Uh, if you really want to know about them fully, please download my training book for free and watch lessons of this video that explains how to work with that book. Uh, so let's go ahead and start from the very end of this etude and um, I, um, I hope that will inspire some of you to uh, to start working this etude and to believe that you can do this because I'm sure uh, most of you who open this etude uh, and start learning it and at one point just give up because uh, there are like two or three particular fragments that are very difficult to learn and practice. So let's go ahead and um, so starting from the very last line from here. So, um, <laughs> how to make it fast? <laughs> uh, the movements... Okay guys, so first I want to show you some little tricks again. Um, how I change uh, hands, how I help my left hand with the, with the right hand over here. So first of all, if we start from here, we have this arpeggiato here. I'm not doing this arpeggiata because after all this, after all these runs, I really need some, and, and you know it's not really stable. I, I really need some stable point uh, in the end of these runs to to kind of breathe out. So if I do like this, it's still not stable for me. And since this E I have in the right hand and the tempo and the pedal, everything cover, you you cannot really. Um, notice that I'm changing something. So let's do this. Um, instead of this arpeggiata, I'm just playing this fifth. Like this. Now, next. As I told you before, uh, I'm gonna use my left hand to help my right hand every time I play with a weak finger that is not uh, enough stable for me. In this um, arpeggios, uh, my fourth finger is not stable, so I'm gonna use my left hand over here to cover my fin first fourth finger in my right hand. So, this is what I do. Absolutely sure where exactly you start making this uh, this chord in the left hand. You cannot do like this because in very fast tempo you don't have enough time between these two notes. So what I'm doing, I'm starting making it together with the right hand this way. Now back, I'm using the same technique. So. When I'm about to play uh, this C sharp with my fourth finger, I use my left hand. So basically, I'm changing here. I'm changing here. Make this part very clear for me. Now again. Now, what I'm doing with my wrist and elbow movement, which is again very important. Uh, don't want to repeat myself hundreds of times. Uh, make sure that your wrist follows the melodic pattern. So if the note is higher than previous note, then the wrist goes to the right. And the, if the note lower than previous note, then the wrist goes to the left. So um, I'm just gonna show you where I move elbows in, in, both, in, my, in my both hands. Elbow left to his left hand. Elbow left to his right hand. Now, over here. Wrist left, elbow right. Elbow right together with the torso. 
person. Now this note I'm playing wrist to the right, elbow to the left because we already need to prepare our hand to play the next chord over here. So elbow right. here because we about to play this note. Now elbow left together with the torso. Elbow left, elbow left. movements in the timbre of string group of instruments here with beautiful legato like glissando between notes uh, then you um, imagine it in a harmony and then we're going to dynamics and balance so basically you imagine very very loud over here um, nothing to add except Please voice in this chord the top part and E and this one I'm voicing my fingers so it wouldn't be like this. Mm. Now articulation is fine, there's no really accents. Um, now we're going to the most uh, interesting part, musical speech. <clears throat> of course we're gonna intonate every interval uh, with musical speech uh, knowing where we intonate third or sixth or unison but again like I told you before um, you can help um, you know if you have like a weak finger for example about me I always struggle with my second finger I don't know why my second finger is always late. <laughs> he cannot react as fast as my other fingers. So um, I have to pay more attention to the interval that this finger is about to play. For example, here, this ascending fifth. I have to focus on this fifth more than on other intervals when I intonate with musical speech. And that will let me play um, this interval more expressive and let my finger exert uh, sooner and be ready to play. So basically I'm always paying attention to this ascending fifth. Now fifth, four, three, very important because uh, if we're going a little bit uh, further, the, the, there will be like motif over here, and this is the main interval in this motif, this is the third, so again my pingle is very um, soft and weak, so I have to emphasize it more. Now when I go back, again my struggle second finger, so I'm thinking about six down, three up, six down. In this case, when I play, I really pay 100% of attention to this ascending fifth, ascending fifth, descending uh, sixth, and um, that really helps me to play clear when I'm playing this um, 
in fast tempos. <coughs> um, if we talk about phrasing here, then uh, definitely the limit of motive is one bar and everything goes over here in one motives and in the second motive everything so basically to the very last interval and then here to this um, unison so I'm gonna play by motive now about phrase then um, the main motive in this phrase so basically this is one phrase that um, in my interpretation consists of three motives and um, <clears throat> first and last motive more important than uh, middle one um, so this one important now this one by phrase this way um, I guess it's it I mean after after all of course you're adding um, emotional image and form and pulsation and by the way I pulsate um, every quarter and everything you express through artistry when you play um, so these little tips really help me to overcome it again when I practiced this uh, fragment at the very last stage when I'm about to really learn uh, this fragment very fast then uh, the plan would be the same as I told you before. First, I would play in a slow tempo, maybe three times. Then, exactly this, exactly this fragment. Then I would start a little bit before, so something from here. And play the whole part all together also like maybe repeat two three times then I would go to moderate tempo again I would play that moderate tempo exactly this last line maybe five times then again I would start from here and again play another like three five times in that moderate tempo and then I would play again the last line in the fast tempo several times and again in the context starting from here again uh, three five times in the fast tempo. In this case um, I can uh, actually uh, learn it very well. Uh, so it's very efficient. You can learn it very well during very short time. Uh, Alright, so if we're going, okay, now I'm going a little bit up and up. So let's talk about this place. Um, again, all the movements when we make um, Right, right, left, right, left, right. 
uh, because it's all changing position, all leaves. And with my right hand, I still uh, remain the same pattern every half of the bar. So basically here. Imagine again um, in timber with bisando uh, playing it with intonation and weight. Uh, then listen to harmonies. <laughs> Next, when we talk about dynamics and voicing here, of course you need to imagine uh, the notes as loud as possible because this is fortissimo, this is the hit. But please guys, um, make sure that you really voice only one hand. If you play both hands on the same level, the loudness, then that would just create a noise. You really need to focus and really imagine closer the right hand over here. So basically, if I am, when I play and I imagine, it would be... So left hand... I think it's like something like mezzo piano when I play. But altogether, it does create... Um, Illusion that is forte, so everything is forte. But trust me, if you play like this, it creates illusion of more forte than you play like this. <laughs> so please, left hand on background all the time. Uh, so in this case, you can intonate the melody better, you know, and still have this good legato. Um, Okay, what else? Okay, so let's talk about musical speech here. Um, so again, in this fragment, my pinkle is very weak, so I need to pay attention to the interval um, of this pinkle. So, this one. So I always have to keep in mind that here, of course, this is 2 up, 2 down, but this is 6 up. And the good thing that um, most of the time it is always 6 up, so... I have time to 
intonate this uh, big interval. <clears throat> so if we talk about phrasing here, then again one motif lasts one bar and the main uh, interval comes to the second quarter. So every time I'm playing, I'm intonating this six down more expressive. Remember I told you before, not every accent 
that shopping route in the score you need to treat as real accent. So please, even it's written con fuoco, really, if you try to intonate it in very fast tempo, it would be like this. No, 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 no. It's very difficult to play, and it's really um break the line, the melody line. So again. I assuming I'm assuming that he wrote it for his students to basically to simply voice this um, melody in the left hand, so it wouldn't be just. But so basically, just voice this um, this this part. Um, so please do not do not make any accents over here. It's really very difficult to play with accents. Um, so after that, we're gonna play with musical speech again. Now here. It really helps me to play all these large leaps in the left hand very accurate and clear and with ease. If I understand very clear which interval I'm intonating going up. So for example here. Six up, right? So six up, six up. one bar I intonate second quarter second quarter in every motif is more important so just like in previous example so I'm gonna play by motif here <laughs> closer, even closer than my right hand. I'm gonna uh, show my right hand a little bit later over here, making it more closer, but this one really, this is again avoid this on every note on one one level it's absolutely not not good here <laughs> so if we make it with voicing uh, it's gonna be the same <laughs> Now 
uh, we skip back to the phrasing. Uh, in the phrase, the main motive gonna be the very first one, and second one less. Again, first one more, second one less. <laughs> stability at the very end of this, so I'm playing just this. I really let go of this bass. It really helps me. So I'm basically intonate, three up here, this. And it's much better than do something else. Um, again, sentence. In this sentence, first phrase, uh, I make more important than second one. I'm actually not really sure about that. I think I make this phrase the same. I don't know. I probably shouldn't. Okay, let me try it different ways. What if we make first phrase more important than the second one? <clears throat> taking uh, the top note in this chord with my right hand. And this is actually sfarzanda, uh, another way um, for Chopin to write this sfarzanda, and I believe that this is sfarzanda. So when we intonate, making this little sparsana. Yeah. Uh, it's just a very simple thing. Um, so let's go to this uh, second page, this one. <laughs> Another favorite place. <laughs> Uh, honestly, when I first tried to play it um, absolutely like in a proper way, you know, like like it's written here, taking this uh, note with the first finger every time, but it's so difficult, really. I mean, I'm playing with my weak fingers, and these weak fingers are supposed to play the melody that I'm gonna voice later. So this is gonna be the loudest one here. So it's. I cannot play it with, with this finger. So in order to play it with two three four two three four, I had to I have to take um, this note with my left hand. So this is what I'm doing. again uh, movements of wrist and elbow what I'm doing here um, in my right hand 
I'm moving my elbow really every quarter. So here, here, now this right, this left, very quickly. Right, 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 left. sure where exactly I'm moving. Either on the last note I move my elbow right or on this note I move my elbow. I don't know, something in the middle. Okay, let's say in the very last note. Okay, So, up. On this note I'm moving down. Elbow right. show you with both hands because it's uh, the same. Every time I'm playing this descending third here, I move elbows oh, in both hands, which is very um, simple here. Left, left, left. And pay attention to the, to the melody. You see the melody? down so please imagine this melody and play it every time you move your wrist down so left this is a little bit left but still uh, now with my left hand apparently I move my left my, my elbow here and then back Intonation. Yeah, if we talk about intonation, again, I... Okay, before intonation, let me play first this. And so many things to tell you. Because uh, this is another way for Chopin to write accents when everything is piano and then all of a sudden on one note he would write forte. So this one I really treat like a real accent. So I intonate and then the rest again don't do this. If you intonate it's again very hysterical if I can use this word. I don't know really if I can use it in English, but um, it's not good. And actually, every time people playing this fragment, it sounds so aggressive and loud. When, if you really listen to the harmonies, you know, when I was on the stage of listening to harmonies, I could understand that there is nothing, you know, aggressive and angry and scary in these chords and um, to tension. No, it's all about, you know, uh, anticipation something, about like um, something miracle gonna happen or some begging intonation here, but not the rude one that usually students play.
without any dramatism here. Major, by the way. that absolutely destroyed the, their legato phrase uh, and phrasing actually itself and uh, another thing that again they don't make any uh, um, correct voicing over here uh, all the time they play and trying to every single note on the same level it's not gonna work here moreover it's so, it's so difficult to play this way you know people play without phrasing people make this accents people play without uh, good voicing they they make difficulties in for themselves you know <laughs> uh, so what we need to do is uh, like I said we're gonna only remain accents here and everything the rest we're gonna play with good legato now when it's time to imagine dynamics here everything is piano this is also piano but this is just accent over here, not fortissima again, fortissima will be only in the, um, well, in the, in the next page and in the very end, not here. So I'm mentioning like good forte, you know. Now when it's time to voice something, I'm gonna voice just right hand, everything else gonna be on the background. Now in the left hand itself, again, I'm not gonna play like this every note the same. No, I'm going to voice bass, the note that is changing. Now here I'm, I'm using, I'm, I'm voicing middle part. This one. Uh, again, if you have problems how to voice notes, one note, in the chord or interval um, and still remain like this simultaneous sounding on the chord uh, please make sure that you really imagine every single note in the chord and you imagine the note that you're gonna voice closer to you and again everything you express ex express express through intonation and weight this is the only way how you can uh, control the fingers over here and muscles over here it's all in the lessons, in previous lessons I'm talking about this. So, uh, let's see how it goes with good voicing, uh, especially here. This one, everything on the background, only, only melody. Only melody left. So let's see how it's gonna how it's gonna sound with uh, dynamics and voicing. Here we're making an uh, accent. Um, so it's very important in this fragment to make good voicing. Uh, now we're going to talk about um, musical speech. Um, there is nothing really pay attention. Probably here. Be very accurate uh, in this little leaf. Now, when we come here, I emphasize this fall up. This 
part, um, I know many students struggle with this line. It really helps me uh, when I pay attention to first descending third and then in the melody descending second. Descending third, descending second. And together with descending third, when I intonate it with musical speech, I move my elbow. especially when I'm playing in the very fast tempo. And um, when we talk about phrasing here, uh, again, let's play by motif. Um, I will just show you how I'm into this so you will understand. So this is the first motif. This is second. Again first. Second. And now over here, first motif more important. So this is first. This is second. Then again, first motif more important. For example, some some uh, not so much difficult fragments. Uh, for example, here. Maybe some of you can struggle with your left hand over here. <laughs> so again, um, basically this is you know my second finger this interval to my second finger. I have to intonate um, much better. So again, when I'm playing here, I concentrate my attention on this unison and um, intonate it with musical speech very very well I can show you which movements I'm making with my elbow. 
So with left hand, uh, with the right hand, okay, okay, with left hand. Uh, every time I play with second finger, I move my elbow left. And every time I play with my pinkle in the right hand, I move my elbow left as well. So basically a wrist going to the right, but my elbow goes to the left. Okay, I'm gonna show so, so, so okay. your uh, right hand. So left hand is on the background and you imagine right hand closer. So in this case when you play it, um, it sounds much better. <laughs> so this thing. And you can clear, you can, you can hear and intonate the melody much better. Yeah. Comparably with this without voicing, for example. This is just a mess of notes, so... So my left hand basically play piano <laughs> over here. Uh, at the same time, we're next time. Now, when we talk about musical speech, um, what helps me to play this uh, fragment very uh, fast and, e and easy, um, every time I play with my left hand, I'm paying attention to this um, augmented fourth, because it's, the pattern always the same, augmented fourth. again my second finger starts uh, working better. Now uh, this is very nice part where basically um, intervals matching um, in my right hand and left hand. So when I'm doing here I intonate octave down and octave up every time. stability while playing and play it very clear and accurate and the same way the next time now very important to again um, see how phrasing is structured here um, the, the first motif again um, continues one bar and um, how I intonate it? Again, I'm, I'm, yeah. Again, I'm intonating to the uh, the most important interval goes to the second quarter of this motif. So like this. So this ascending octave. Then 
uh, the first motif going to be more important and second motif I'm going to intonate a little bit less. <laughs> So that will um, make this illusion of diminuendo. <laughs> uh, and the same way I'm playing um, in the next time. And again, if you if we look um, in this place in perspective, starting from here, this is basically the whole sentence. emphasizing the first phrase more than the second phrase. So the first phrase is more important. And this is less. And the same, um, the same way next time. So that will create this nature, um, natural Natural way of intonation, <laughs> very nice one. Um, yeah, so just pay attention that again, I'm, I'm not making um, in this edition. I can see again this uh, accent every time here. Again, he probably uh, was trying to help his students who didn't play it very clear. That's why he wrote this accent. So please ignore them. As well as here, the only accent I'm making. Two actually accents. I'm making here when it's when it's written for the piano, and then over here. So if I'm intonating, I'm intonating this way. <laughs> so <laughs> and I'm probably singing very funny. <laughs> so. Of course, I'm making 
um, dynamically I'm making this little crescendo that I written here but also I connecting I'm connecting this with good phrasing and um, this is a motif you know first motif and everything I'm leading to the last quarter of this bar so it will help to make this um, crescendo intonation here so I'm changing everything drums to the first quarter. So you see? This way. Um, in this case, this intonation will be very, very expressive because many times I heard like people playing <laughs> this way. Um, not making anything that is written in the score. Um, in the next lines, I'm basically uh, led myself to make this sforzante here, accent, and everything plays piano. And again, accent. Again, that doesn't mean this forte. That doesn't mean that I'm playing all the sudden forte. No, I'm not making this. Of course, I'm. I'm, I'm voicing here, but I'm still making sforzanda in the um, in the nuances of piano. Be sure that you're also playing this with good phrasing. Um, I'm voicing um, the right hand and the piano in my left hand, and I'm actually making this. Um, you see, for the piano again, I'm making sforzanda. And I'm paying attention because this is like very small motif over here. So make sure that everything comes to this ascending. Seven in the right hand, and of course I'm moving my elbow over here, preparing the new position. So I'm always sure that I'm gonna play it very uh, clear. So I'm moving elbow left, and on the right hand elbow right. If you can see also in bar uh, in bar number three, this one, um, this um, say this quavers that he wanted to be um, to be highlighted. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm imagining this note closer, but I also make sure that I'm intonating this interval very very uh, very well. So ascending fifth. Sending augmented four, um, uh, diminished fifth, whatever. Then ascending six, ascending fifth. I always keep that in mind when I'm playing. Um, it helps me again with my second finger. <laughs> um, and the same, the same thing over here with left hand. Always six up. It will it will change. Um, he probably again wanted to just emphasize this um, intonation thing, you know. So just first of all, voice the right hand here. Don't play like this. you just make this small motifs over here so everything you intonate from the first um, from from the from the first note so 
and if you voice very nice the melody, if you make this intonation, that should be enough uh, to make this little, um, to make this, to make this bar be very expressive. You don't need any accents here because it's really out of this character. It's more like asking it to intonation, begging, not like. Not the heroic one. <laughs> and um, I don't know, please make sure that when you play this um, accompaniment in the left hand, all these intervals and chords, again, you know exactly which voice you um, highlight here. I'm, I'm voicing first uh, top and then bottom. Here, um, my first finger. It helps a lot because if you don't do this, then it's very heavy. And the texture will be very heavy. It's everything the same. So I'm highlighting my first finger. The rest on the background. Now this one again. Um, I'm going by. see the melody here. I'm trying all the time, I'm trying to, to find the melody even in the accompaniment. So I'm making this. expression can really help you to overcome super difficult fragments in this etude. Uh, so I really encourage you to, uh, to, to read the book and to watch um, particular lessons of this video course that explain how to work with this book, how to uh, develop these uh, correct articulations, how to imagine sounds in your hand, how to, to make correct recent elbow movement, um, how to feel musical speech, musical meaning of each interval and intonate it properly, um, how to find the, the phrasing, how to see the structure of motifs, of phrases and sentences. So it's, it's all very, very important, you know, not only in the musical way. It really helps you to distribute energy while playing and any etude would be, would be played with ease and the texture more transparent. Yeah, so it's very important. Uh, all right. Um, oh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.